don't know if you've ever been uh, involved in, a, in waiting for an aeroplane and uh, sitting there waiting happily with all the people around you and suddenly suddenly noticing that you're on your own where'd everyone go and you find out the gate number had been changed and everybody's got the memo everybody's moved to the new gate number and you're left sitting alone um, they, they, they have all these abbreviations in modern life and one of them is FOMO this sense of fear of missing out and as we look at this section of Paul's letter to the Colossians from alienation to reconciliation I wonder is that partly what's going on here this, this sense of FOMO a fear of missing out what what if there was more to spiritual experience than you had realized? What if God's intentions of connection with you were deeper and richer than you had noticed before? I want to suggest they are. And if, if God desires to be closer to you than you ever believed possible, what does that look like? Have you ever felt distant from God, a million miles away, wondered if he even cares, even notices, or even listens? Well, there may be reasons for that, but it's not ones that he can't overcome. Um, he, Paul starts in verse 21 with, with this. He says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Alienation was a common feeling, particularly for the Gentile in Paul's day, and especially around the temple in Jerusalem. Um, Mark Maynell helpfully remarks this. He says, Despite visibly communicating God's presence, talking about the temple structures, it did not exactly offer the comfort of full access. In many ways it functioned as a colossal no entry sign. And, and in a sense you've got all these degrees of separation and then Paul, Paul's verdict here for, and predicament for humanity is devastating. He says we are alienated from God deservedly on account of our rebellious attitudes to God. Now none of us likes to think of ourselves like that but He's basically saying look, wrong thoughts lead to vices and our evil actions lead to more corrupted thinking. And I don't know if you read your newspapers or your internet headlines, but brokenness abounds, doesn't it, in human society. And it's not just now, it's been throughout time, throughout societies, right across the globe. And the alienation is scary because if Jesus Christ is who he says he is, the Lord of all creation, and in, in in and supreme in redemption, then then he is to be separated from this this Lord, the one who is the Lord of life and death, is a dangerous thing. And in fact, Paul has already sorted that. In one sense, you could argue all meaning and purpose is found wrapped up in Jesus. And if that's the case, to be alienated from Him means that we'll struggle to find meaning and purpose. And I mean that fits with reality in the world that we live in. But as I said, it doesn't stay there because Paul goes on, he says, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Reconciliation speaks of the pain of a broken relationship, but it also speaks of the beauty of being restored. And Paul focuses on that here. He says, the gospel through Paul's eyes, you see, is always God's initiative. He's the one that reconciles. He's the one that steps in first. The Colossian believers had no hand in it. There's no leg up we can give ourselves, no self-help. This reconciliation was accomplished by Christ the Redeemer, who buys us back at great cost. See, the God of heaven entered humanity. He became one of us. He suffered at the hands of his own creatures, split his blood to make peace spilt his blood to make peace. Christ pays the penalty. He smashes a way open for all humanity to be restored to God. In a sense, despite ourselves, through no help of ourselves, yet remarkably through Christ's great cost, forgiveness is available for all who bow the knee. And then there'll be no more pointing fingers, no more accusations, because God can wipe the slate clean. And, and how is this to happen? He says in verse 23, If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you have heard, and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Paul encourages us to continue in our faith, continue trusting in the supreme Christ. He says it's not about how big our faith is, it's about whom we put our faith upon or in. See, the way is open for all who believe to come and be reconciled. The costly ransom has been paid. The barriers have been 
deconstructed and dismantled, the only thing in your way and my way is our pride and our blindness. You see, all are welcome to come through Christ, the whosoever. So if you feel estranged, alienated, distant from God, don't wait another moment. Don't hesitate. Put your hand out for God who has reached down to you and to us. Seek his forgiveness now and let God reconcile you and let him bring you peace. I'm your host today, Matt Tuttleby of Bundoran Bible Reflections. Have a great week.